Hello friends, Tori here. I'm excited to be doing the next installment of the Non-Programmers Emacs series and today we're looking at how to read in Emacs. So you can do any number of types of reading in Emacs, whether it's PDF files or whether it's text documents. In particular, of course, Emacs is best for text document reading because it is a text editor after all. In this video we're going to be looking at some of the basic reading techniques. The things I'm going to show you, although I will be spending most of my time in org mode buffers, the, thing, the tricks I'll show you will work in any kind of buffer. And if the summary seems fast, please check out the blog link below, which will give you the explicit details with commands and code and anything else you might need. You're also free to ask me questions. I look forward to hearing your comments, and we'll go ahead and get started here. The first thing I'll show you with basic reading in Emacs is themes. So in Emacs, a theme covers the font size, the font coloring, and the background color, for instance. And usually these are divided into high contrast and low contrast options. Right now my theme is a white background with a dark foreground. Usually in Emacs, especially since I spend a large part of my day looking at the Emacs screen, I find it easier on the eyes to do a dark, uh, a dark theme. So all you do is load the theme. And in this case, my favorite is Menage Dark, and so I prefer to have the dark background with, the, with a high contrast white or light foreground. Themes are a global setting, and so this means that if you change a theme, it changes the appearance of every Emacs window of the same session. So for instance, if I pop open another window, regardless of the buffer it's looking at, I'm going to see the same kind of dark background. Next up, we'll look at font size. So, unlike themes, this is on a per buffer basis. All right. And font size is as you would expect, the ability to increase or decrease. Now, this is not a Emacs is not a word processor, and this means that things like font size aren't encoded in the actual documents themselves. So, in other words, I'm not changing the content of this file. It's is still unchanged and this means that next time I open the file it will ref, uh, default back to the original font size. But that's something useful to know because the size I use for writing is a small one, but when I'm reading sometimes it's more convenient to have a larger font size. Emacs makes it easy to with just a few keystrokes increase that size, revert to the normal, or shrink it for maybe getting an overall view. All right. That's font size. Next I'm going to look at line truncation. So as you see right now, some of these lines, I can easily see verses because they're separated on their own lines, but they go off the screen and it's a little bit awkward if I try to go to the end of a line and it shifts everything. So I've made a single keystroke to shift to truncated lines. So in other words, uh, word wrapping is possible and I recommend if you use this often, putting it into the keystroke, you'll see the code in the blog. And so this way it's easy to actually read the whole line once I know that I'm on the line that I need. Related to this is line highlighting. So this is useful for screencasts like this, where it highlights the whole semantic line, whether it's broken or not. And it's useful if you're showing your screen to other people and they need to be able to follow where your cursor is at. Or if you are in multiple split screens and you don't want to lose yourself, and you're wondering where your cursor is at right now, even when you're not using, even when you're not coding in Emacs, this can be a useful thing. So this is line highlighting. Again, I put it onto a single key. I can, I'll show you how to do that on the blog. And I find it something I use very often. Finally, when talking about lines here, even with the line split, so I can technically read everything right here, it's far too wide for comfortable reading. So what I'm going to show you isn't really an Emacs trick but rather an operating system trick that feels like an Emacs trick because by changing the screen size with word wrapping enabled I get something much more comfortable for my reading whereas I prefer the wider screen if I'm doing something with multiple views for instance. On GNOME based Linux interfaces as well as on Windows the shortcut starts with alt space to drop down the menu and usually X to toggle maximization. I'd love for one of our viewers to share with us what it would be on a Mac device, but changing the window size or in Emacs parlance, the frame size is very useful when you have your, your lines at the size and the width that you want. 
Finally, the last thing I'll show you is a repeat of something I've shown before that's one of the most useful techniques in Emacs. And that is interact, uh, incremental search. So this means that as you type, it searches for something. Now suppose I want to navigate the file and I know just where I want to go. So if I'm in the scriptures, maybe I want to go to a particular chapter and verse. Incremental search navigates as you type and just takes you right there and you can easily repeat the search if you know it's going to bring something else back. So if I'm going to a verse, I was just typing the name of that verse and it works. You can go forward or backward and then if I want to search for topics, you can easily do something like that. Okay, those are some of the basic techniques for reading in Emacs. I hope you found this useful and um, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments below or visit my website and the blog you'll see linked is going to have the full description of this and the next following videos. Take care.